All right, guys, I've had a lot of people ask how to get these seamless uh, to where the monitors perfectly flow when um, anything's going by and that there is a zero distortion. And you absolutely can. You don't have to use the in-game uh, FOVs. This would actually override that. Um, and you would only be able to use the seat adjustments and head adjustments, but not the FOV adjustments. Um, this does require you to do some measurements and I'll take you guys through that process. You'll need to go uh, to a certain website and uh, input some, some information from the measurements into that calculator. That'll give you information and then you put that into the config file. So uh, I figured I might as well take you guys on just a little cruise so you could see um, how smooth it is. As long as I hold this in the same eyesight level as mine, then it should be perfect for you guys. Well, I'll just take you guys so you can see that if I like hold it at a specific angle, see so how the ground warps from screen to screen, but that's just because you have to specifically put it in at the right angle of your eye height. So uh, as long as I hold it at the right height, everything is perfectly fine, right? And my head's not moving, so naturally, um, I'm not going to see those adjustments or those warpings, uh, if you will, because my head is always at uh, the same position, just like yours would be while you're driving as well. So you can actually see Rick right there is perfect uh, positioning. And now that we can't see because the street lights out, there you go. So you can see we're going right across without any warping whatsoever. So. Um, let me show you guys how to get this effect. You'll have to make some uh, calculations online, some measurements, and actually you want to do the calculations. It does it for you. So I'll take you through that process. Now, if you uh, have multiple monitors and you haven't set up your monitors as one within your system, then you'll need to do that. Now, I can only give you the information if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Um, because I only know that way. I don't know the other graphics cards or ways to do them. I'm, I'm sure somebody might know in the comments. If you do, please direct somebody um, where they can find out how to configure their monitors as one if they're on a different graphics card than, than the NVIDIA card. Um, and I appreciate you doing that if you can. All right, so if you have an NVIDIA card, you're, you'll need to uh, configure the monitors as one if you haven't already done that. And to do that, we're gonna use NVIDIA Surround. So we'll open up the NVIDIA control panel um, let's see, where the hell did it go? Okay, uh, so it's here. All right, so uh, you should have an option uh, that says configure surround uh, physics, okay? Uh, you'll click on that, and that'll take you to this screen that you're looking at here. And what you're going to do is uh, you're going to basically, what it says here is span the displays with surround. So uh, you're going to check that box, and you're going to click on configure. Uh, now, what this will do is it'll start to throw numbers on all of your monitors. And uh, these boxes may or may not be checked. You have to check all of them. And you'll need to make sure that the, uh, to the topography is set according to your situation. So um, in my case, I'm putting you know four into one here. So uh, you might have three, whatever your case is, you can do it. I, I started out with double monitors, and I did this originally that way. And I did this all this original setup that way. It worked fine, too. Um, so I've done this with doubles, triples, and now quads uh, and every single time it's all worked perfectly with all of these methods so just so you're aware okay so once you have those all checked and you have these in the right order and everything works correctly then you'll apply it it'll then make your entire uh, system all one screen um, and you'll learn to hate life just a little bit when you try to open programs that now expand across the entire can set up. Um, and so it's gonna drive you nuts so uh, but you can always disable it However, when you come back in here and you disable it, I have found that a lot of times things kind of go wonky on my screens and I got to redo things. You'll notice that uh, my toolbar over here or my taskbar is only on one of my four screens as opposed to being across all of them. I don't know. It, it's how you set it up to play ATS the way, the way you want. I can't help you on your own computer setup as far as what you do in the day-to-day -day stuff on there. It's, it's going to be a pain. Uh, anyway, so that's how you do this portion. So once you have this set up, then we'll go into the next step, which would be getting the config files all situated and, and everything else from there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open up our American Truck Simulator folder. 
and we're looking for our config.cfg file. Okay, the goal here is to change one value within this file, uh, save that, and that'll allow us to make the changes we need to another file. So let's go ahead and open up your config file. Uh, you can just right click, open it with Notepad. That would probably uh, be the best thing to do. I know you couldn't see that because I'm only recording this screen, um, but right click, go to Open With, and then choose Notepad. Uh, so then you will have something like this on the left side of the screen here. And what we're looking for is uh, you set R underscore multimon underscore mode. Uh, sounds difficult. It's really not. It's just right here. Uh, not even you don't even need to scroll through the entire thing. It's just you know right here at the bottom of the first page more or less. Uh, now we're looking for this uh, this section because we want to change this value. You will likely have uh, a different value here, depending on your setup. Uh, so we're going to change this to 4. Uh, this will give us the ability to then make the changes we need in another file. So once um, we have made this a 4, hit Control S to save this file, and then launch the American Truck Sim. Once you've launched that, gotten to the menu, close it down. What this is going to do is it's going to uh, spawn a file, so to speak, uh, within our American Truck Simulator Documents folder. And what we're looking for is this new one here called multimon underscore config dot SII. Um, essentially what we're going to do is replace the contents of, of this with the setup that corresponds with yours, um, and then we'll change some of the values that we find from an online calculator. So, now that we have this file, don't open it, don't mess with it, you don't need to deal with it. Right now, what we need to do is open up the link that I've provided down below, which uh, is the link to the Google Sheets document, um, or I should say Google Sheet, that has the calculator to uh, figure out your setup. So let's head over there. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> so here we are in the calculator. Um, the top of the calculator, it says ATS, ETS, 2 FOV, Multimon uh, Settings Calculator. Do not change anything on this. Uh, as soon as you open this, go to File, and then Make a Copy. And then once you've made your copy, close down the original and don't open it again. Now, I've made my copy and I've renamed it, just considering I'm running four screens. Um, now, if you want to run yours with three, that's fine. Take a look at the bottom of this page. You'll see that there are examples for uh, triples and quads, etc. So uh, you can see the examples there if you want, and they give you an idea of how to set up this first section here. And if you scroll all the way down, it kind of gives you an understanding of what the layout looks like. So this is a somebody setup that has triples, but they also have a dashboard screen either down below or above. Um, Here's a, uh, another version you can see. So if you've got a really wide screen and then two smaller ones, you can set it up uh, as such. Um, if you happen to have uh, curved screens like I do, then you're going to have something like this. So let's go over to the basic calculator. Uh, yours is going to be empty here. And what you want to do is uh, get your tape measure, and we're going to measure several things. And we're basically going to measure uh, whatever it is that it says here. So. Um, first of all, I have my two center monitors slightly angled inwards, which uh, you can see down here, the example of that, right? So they're slightly angled. That's about a nine degree angle. Um, so what I've done here is for the center, center monitor, I've set that to negative 9.0 degrees. Uh, there's zero vertical pitch for that. Now we're going to measure our screens, okay? Now your screens need to be measured without the bezels, okay? So just the screen portion. Now, if you turn your screens on, uh, your bezel may be there, but you also may have a little small blank section all around the inside edge of the bezel. So I would consider all of that blank space to be uh, for the bezel, okay? Um, so when you measure your screen, you're measuring from the inside width of what actually displays uh, that you can actually see. So you put that measurement here, and it should be, if it's different for all of your screens, then you'll obviously put them accordingly. But if it's the same like mine, you'll put them all the same. Uh, and the same goes for the screen height. 
Okay. Now let's go into this next section here. This is important. Uh, this is the distance at which you're sitting while you're driving to your center screen. And the center screen means the one that's, now if you have a quad set up, it's going to be this one over here on the left. Okay. Uh, I don't have a way to highlight it, but you can see monitor one. Oh, goodness sake. I'm, I'm moving shit. Um, you can see monitor one is the red line here. That's my center screen. So if yours happens to be just one screen, then it would be different. Obviously, uh, we're going to move this to find your specific eye view, but the idea is to measure from that screen. So once you have that measurement in there, stay seated in that position and now adjust your tape measure uh, for the ones down below here. So um, real quick, if you're doing a quad screen setup the way I'm doing it, uh, which you can see down here, then you will have it set up like this, which is center, right, left, and right too. So to do that, you're gonna check and uncheck these boxes. It gives you the information right here on how to understand that. So true equals lateral, false equals vertical. So uh, in other words, check equals yes, this is a lateral monitor to the next, or it's a vertical monitor to the next. For mine, it would be your center monitor, your right from the center monitor, your far left, and then your far right. Okay, so now that we got those check marks set up, and you've now filled out your green section above here, and you've put your eye distances uh, to each monitor, so that's from your same seating position, you're just going to run a tape measure, put it next to your head or against your head, and extend that tape measure until it gets to the center of each one of those screens from your sitting position. Now, if you lean back in your chair while you drive, make sure you measure from the position at which you sit the most. So if you are sitting forward while you're doing this, you will need to uh, lean back in your actual driving position and do your measurements. Uh, moving on to the right here, now we're going to put the, the width of the bezels. So that's that blank space from when your screen ends to the edge of the monitor. And this is important because this is going to calculate that blank space between the monitors to then act like that device is part of your truck and you're just seeing the items go behind it like you would if you were inside of a real truck. And if you are running those clear pieces on the sides, then you won't need to do this most likely. In our case, I'm not, so you will need to put the bezels for all of them. They should all be the same unless they are actually different size uh, screens. Now, this will be blank for you over here on the right where it says lateral offset. It will then consider you to be right in the middle of this center screen and it'll put you all the way down, okay? And it'll put you at the distance distance at which you told it above. So if this needs to be moved over, I tend to lean to my right from center. I don't know about you guys. I kind of have a little lean uh, into the cab, onto my shifter. My left arm's kind of straight. So my eyesight's kind of right over the edge of my right side of the steering wheel. So that's kind of where I'm at here, which is why I put the negative 2.5. So if I were to change this to zero, it would then move me to right in the middle and all the way down. If I were to put it to five, right, it might put me halfway between the distance between the end, center and end of the monitor. Uh, 10 would put me over here or whatever. So uh, you can adjust that number, negative and positive, to move that around to where you're actually sitting. Okay, that's the hard part, guys, uh, is putting all the measurements in there. You're done. And here's your legend if you have a question on the right side. Um, now we're going to take these these boxes with all the orange information, and we're going to put them into our Multimon config file. So I've included a link down below where you guys can get the actual copy of the Multimon config, uh, in the in the stuff inside of the actual file. Um, but take a look here, and um, oops, excuse me, wrong, wrong one. Here we go. Uh, you can see this one's already filled out for four monitors. Um, you may need to change yours if yours is only three. You could use the same uh, names. Don't worry about changing any of this stuff. Um, you would just remove one of the monitors here in the row, and then you would remove the corresponding monitor down below as well. So look at these sections here. This is one monitor, okay? So these are the values uh, for one of the screens, and if you keep scrolling down, you'll see this is my left screen, this is my right screen, and this is my far right screen, okay? So we're going to go to the calculator that we uh, put all the numbers in, and we're going to take the values from that, and we're going to input them here. So uh, let's go back over to the Chrome window here. You can see the calculator for center. The heading offset is 9, and, and I'm not going to read this all off to you. You can see all of these values here. Okay, take a look at the Multimon config file, and if you look here at the file 
you'll see that the very first thing you're going to want to change is your heading offset. So if you if yours is zero, your screens are flat to you, then you won't have any offset. If they're angled in some way to you, then you will. So you'll put that first value there. The next one is the pitch offset it says zero, so we're already we're already good there. The next one is the horizontal FOV override. So just copy and paste that value right here. Do the same thing for the vertical. Go on down the the frust frustrum or fr frustum. I don't know how to say the damn word. Um, subrect zero one four. Okay, put that information here. Keep on going down. Put the width information and put the height information, and that's it for the center monitor. So. You'll scroll down, go to the left on the uh, uh, on the calculator where the orange boxes are. Make sure you pay attention to this because on the calculator, you'll see that the screens don't go in order necessarily the same as they do in the Multimon config file. So be mindful that you're not putting the wrong values. Like let's say you think that the center is, is the first one, right? It is, you can see it is. And then you go down to the next one and it's left, but yours here on the paper is right. So make sure you put the correct values for the pro appropriate monitor, okay? So keep doing that for each one. Just put those six values in each one of those monitor sections. And once you have those six uh, sections put in, one, two, three, four, five, six, just making sure. Then you're gonna hit Control S as in SAM or save, and that will save that file to the game file. All you have to do now is go into the game, you'll come uh, to your truck, and then hit the F4 button, hit number one, and here you're gonna make your changes to your seat, uh, your head, and that's it, okay? You can adjust your steering wheel too, I have mine turned off because I use an actual real, or I use a dash in front of me, not not the in-game dash. Um, the FOV will now no longer be valid. Like you won't, you can't use the FOV here. It will not do anything for you. Your FOV now is set appropriately for your cab, your monitor setup. So the only thing you can do right now is move your seat forward and backwards, uh, adjust your head up and down, move your seat up and down, um, adjust your head right and left, uh, move your body right and left. And so essentially what you want to do is move it all around until uh, your lines from your screens are all meeting uh, on the sections of the cab, like the uh, the right and left of the, of the windshield, as well as the center divider portion. Uh, and that's it. You should be good to go from there. If you notice that your where you're sitting, the lines don't quite line up from one monitor to the next, uh, you may need to adjust the actual positioning of your monitor a little bit or go back to the calculator and adjust the degree at angle at which you have put into the, uh, to the calculator because maybe you just put a, a couple degrees off. So let me know if you guys have questions. I think I covered it all. Good luck. Let me know.